Um, immigration is something that uh, I'm, I'm sure you have some questions on. Uh, you also heard a lot about the Farm Bill. So let me be, it, it's something that I was uh, very much involved in. Uh, so let me address uh, my involvement in the Farm Bill. Uh, and let me tell you, uh, let me delve into that a little bit because I want you to know uh, what we did, how we did it, why we did it, uh, and at the same time, uh, because it concerns you. You're, you're a rural county. Of the 14 counties that make up Florida's 2nd Congressional District, 12 are rural. So 12 are rural counties with small governments and small communities, uh, small cities, uh, that are affected in a major way by the Farm Bill. Now the Farm Bill, as you know, uh, has, has, is, a, is, a, is a big bill. It's a, it's a five, typically a five-year authorization bill. And uh, there's been a lot of people that are surprised to learn, perhaps many of you in this room, that the United States Department of Agriculture deals with um, not just the farm policy that deal with farmers, but they also deal with 80% uh, of the Farm Bill, which is, uh, consists of the SNAP program. Now the SNAP program is the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program. So otherwise known as food stamps. So 80% of the Farm Bill is the SNAP program, is, is food stamps. So one could say that it is not as much a Farm Bill as it is a SNAP Bill. I think that's fair when it's an 80-20 split. And I see some of you nodding your heads that common sense says when it's 80% one thing, it should be named that. I believe that, um, and in, in this body it's very difficult, but I, I believe in the, in the validity of single subject matter. I like the fact that I would vote on a bill that addressed the issues in that bill that are primarily to be discussed. And that everything would be voted up or down based, to, based on its validity. Not on other things that are not germane to that bill. I also believe that there is another department that deals with so many of our welfare programs, uh, which is Health and Human Services, is far better to administer the food stamp program than the agriculture department. But again, in Washington, D.C., not everything is designed and not everything is performing there on an efficient manner. I know you find that hard to believe. But I think that it would be better suited for those who need those programs, for our farmers to be able to work with the Department of Agriculture, and for those who are, I would say, vulnerable in our society, and a marquee part of this country is that we have always cared for the vulnerable in their periods of transition. And sometimes in, the peri in, tra in, in that vulnerability state from life until death. So when you're talking about children and you're talking about uh, disabled and you're talking about the elderly, they will be in those programs perhaps longer uh, than others. So I think that Health and Human Services is the right department to administer food stamps. So in the Farm Bill, we, um, uh, as traditionally done, the Senate voted their version and the House voted our version. There was a very controversial, um, uh, it turned out to be very controversial, I don't think you're going to find it as controversial as, uh, uh, as the, uh, the parties did in, in D.C. Uh, I submitted, after, a wor after working for one year with 17 different states, uh, health and human services secretaries, and listening to what they were asking us for, since the states are the ones who deliver and maintain and oversee uh, uh, the SNAP programs, I sponsored uh, an amendment uh, that dealt with able-bodied individuals. Now, I didn't say children, and I didn't say disabled, and I didn't say seniors. Able-bodied individuals of working age, that they must be either working, training for work, looking for work, or volunteering in their community, if they are going to be recipients of food stamps. Now, the statistics based on polling says that there's only about 18% of Americans who don't believe in that. 
and that 82% of America believes in what I just stated. Again, let me be crystal, crystal clear. I want to make sure you get this one. Focus and the volume is set right. My amendment, my amendment addressed able-bodied people who are mentally, physically, psychologically able to work, excluding children, excluding the disabled, excluding the seniors. And if they couldn't find a job, they could volunteer. And my goodness, this morning I met some of the greatest 80 and 90 year old volunteers at your hospital, the little pink ladies, and they were there adding to the quality of service and making your community better. A couple weeks ago, I was in Tallahassee at an awards dinner for elder care. Now, if you know anything about elder care in Tallahassee, you know that their primary function is to take food and deliver food to the needy. Now, let's define, or the vulnerable. And who were those people? Most were seniors. And it's done entirely by volunteers. So it is a government program to provide the food, but it's delivered to these individuals who are vulnerable and who need this by volunteers. So I was there the other night at an awards banquet. And I was there to give out and to hand out 40-year awards of service. 30 years of service, 20, 25, down to 10. But the two individuals that received the 40 plus years of service awards were all over 85 years of age. Now, I want to ask anyone in this room, if an 85 year old precious, precious person, on days I'm sure didn't feel good, can utilize their blessings, such as their car or their gas, their time, on good days, bad days, arthritic days, and they can volunteer and deliver food to the needy. And that was one of the allowable, allowable uses in my amendment. You volunteer. And then if you do that, then we are going to make sure that you receive food stamps. Help me now. This is, I'm serious. Is that unreasonable? No. That was about 82%. <laughs> the point is, America, for the last five decades, has spent $15 trillion. When Lyndon Johnson declared war on poverty. What we have done in this country, we have helped many, yes, but we have certainly not advanced our goal to rid poverty in this country. We have spent $15 trillion. There are more people by percentage, there are more people by numbers living in poverty today than were at the time he made that statement. But what Washington is doing, rather, in, in, in these programs, is they are focusing on needs and issues that are fundable rather than solvable. And so when we fund programs, the goal is to spend the money so we can get more next year. And what is happening in many cases, not in all, but in many cases, is individuals are becoming dependent. And I'm not talking about the vulnerable. We are here to care for the vulnerable. We are here to care for the vulnerable. But I will say this, because that's been a hallmark of what we've done. But primarily, that is a responsibility in many ways. I know our, our, our organization, Second Harvest, I see what they're doing to, in, with food. Uh, I see what our churches are doing. Uh, listen, no one provides better uh, food distribution in this district to the hungry uh, than our, our churches. And that and that's it. You know what? According to the scripture, that is the way it's supposed to be. However, we all pay our tax dollar to the federal government that has programs to help the vulnerable. So that amendment uh, was added. That amendment was very uh, hotly debated. And uh, some would say, as, as some in the, the opposition uh, party accused me of, uh, that 
I purposely put that in there to kill the farm bill. Um, and uh, that, is, um, uh, that, is, that is just not true. Uh, that was not the purpose. The purpose was a solution to a problem that America has needed for an awful long time. And that if 85 and 90 year old individuals can be a part of moving America forward through their volunteer service, certainly able-bodied individuals can do their part as well.